When a man has regretted or unwanted sex, he chalks it up to experience and puts it behind him. I didn't. But women want some kind of retribution for their mistakes. She wants a man to pay. I mean, I've, I've said no to, uh, to a woman. I remember one situation where I was saying no to a woman again and again and again and again, and she was still trying it on. We did end up having sex, um, mainly because I just gave in. <laughs> she, <laughs> we did, she, um, yeah, we, we, she basically just uh, climbed on top of me. <laughs> I just gave in. But I thought, at the end of that, I thought, if, I, if, that, was, if that was the other way around, that the next morning I could have easily pleaded rape at the end of the day if a man is raped by a woman um, he's just going to think well I had sex I struck it off it's not a big deal first interview with a premiership footballer who ended up in a Spanish jail falsely accused of rape Last week, three months after Frank was first arrested, the Spanish courts dropped all charges against him. DNA evidence had proved that neither he, Paul Dickov, nor Keith Gillespie had had any contact with the three women. The newswoman seems to be saying that he could only blame himself that these women had laid false rape allegations on him. You could have taken responsibility for yourself. Yeah, I mean, exactly. you're a grown-up. Exactly. You could have decided to yeah. either drink a bit less or just not yeah. hang out with these women. Yeah, exactly. I believe that will always be remembered as the ones that was accused rather than the ones that n never didn't do it, you know, because I looked at the papers a couple of days ago um, when they got wind of that, you know, we was going to be acquitted from the whole thing. And, you know, the story was on page four or five and it was a little article and plenty of people could miss that sort of thing and it wasn't sort of like the front a headline front pages that it had been when we had been accused. What do you think should be the consequences? Where, where a woman makes a false accusation of rape? I don't know. It's very difficult because if you threaten to punish a woman severely for making a false accusation, then she is far less likely to admit that she has made a false accusation. And judging by, um, judging by the fact that at least 20% of women do admit making false allegations of rape, it seems worthwhile to accept the fact that, it seems worthwhile holding on to the fact that many women who make false allegations are at least big enough later on to admit that they've done so. But if they were to be threatened with long-term prison sentences, the danger would be that they wouldn't dare admit that they had impulsively, perhaps, made a false declaration about what had occurred the night before. So I think it's very dangerous. Though you want to punish women strongly for making false allegations. I would reserve the harshest punishment for women that do that. I would actually give them the same punishment. If that bloke had been found guilty and got 10 years, I'd actually give her 10 years. I think matters would be different if a man has spent a long time in prison, say, and it is discovered through some other means. Then I think she deserves the book thrown at her, frankly. If a man has already uh, suffered considerably as a result, and she has not admitted it, but on the whole, I tend to be fearful of anything that, not only in the question of false allegations, but anything that inhibits the truth coming out is something that I fight against. I, I feel the more truth that there is in the world, the better. And so that anything you can do to encourage it to come. If they own up, yeah, I would probably re reduce the term. But if they don't own up and then it's proven that you told lies, right, you'd have given that bloke 10 years, that's what you're getting. That's something you'd definitely like to see. Oh, most definitely, yeah. Well, do you, what do you think happens at the moment with false accusations? Do you think there's no punishment or too little No, there punishment? isn't. If there's, if there's any retaliate, the, the man himself, then he has to take her, take her to court himself, and I don't think he should have to do that. I mean, the way I would tackle it, for most women, especially with relationship rapes, is to say they're not worth a damn. Uh, now, the Home Office and the government has actually stated, through the Centres and Advisory, Sentence advisory panel that being raped by a complete and utter stranger is exactly the same as being raped by someone you're having a long term relationship with. I mean, unbelievable politically correct BS. Um, but I don't believe that. My own belief is that if you are raped by a man whom you have had a long term relationship with, I don't think, it, I actually don't think the rape counts for very much, unless there's violence involved. 
I think the whole thing should be dismissed as froth and bubble. And even if on occasion it is more than froth and bubble, I think for the sake of the society we should simply treat it as froth and bubble and not get too het up over such situations. That's my belief. I think women are far too keen to, to claim that they've been hurt and traumatised long term, forever, uh, by trivial, what I consider to be trivial sexual incidents. A common myth is that rape is about power and not sex. If that's true, why are the vast majority of rape victims, male and female, in and out of prison, in their teens or early twenties? If rape was truly about power, there had been an even spread of victims across ages. By claiming rape to be about power, and not sexual deviance in individual men, rape is used as a weapon by feminists against all men. It's used as an example of the supposed abuses that women suffer due to the relative position of men and women in society. Rape happens, feminists tell us, because of the patriarchy. Rape happens because women are oppressed by men. But rape cannot be about the oppression of women because it doesn't explain male rape. Real rape, when it actually happens, is an unforgivable act to men. For a start, off, I don't actually understand blokes that do rape women, OK? It's, it's a I, I can't even imagine what they've got to be animals. Even in prison, rapists of women are the lowest of the low and need to be segregated from the general population if they're to survive. And it's this strength of feeling within men about rape that's the reason why it's such a powerful weapon against them. It helps turn men against each other. Rape is not a male-only crime, but it's exclusively reported as such, and most people can't easily conceive of a female rapist. But rape is committed by women, most commonly against children and other women. Women tend to use objects, uh, broom handles, bottles. One woman said that, that uh, she was sexually abused by rose stems with the thorns still on being stuck up. Um, women can be quite cruel using objects, but they're still after their own sexual gratification. So it's kind of, you know, that it, it's just actually, it's, it, it's just a physiological thing, the difference. If a woman over 18 has sex with a boy under 16 years of age, it's legally defined as rape. But when women rape boys, it's not generally described as such. Instead, it's typically called seduction, and may actually be a good experience for a boy. Come on. Oh my God, you're still a virgin. I was 11. 11 years old? Really? How old is she? I don't know, 25. You're kidding me. <laughs> oh my gosh. She was one of the maids. Did you pay her? My parents did. To have sex with you. To be a maid. Hope you gave her a hell of a Christmas bonus. This lady's about to quote more controversy when she seduces a teenage tearaway on screen. One of the sexiest women in soap is going to be telling me why she's looking forward to being a bit naughty. Women who sexually abuse kids, if you look in, if you look in the media, uh, have affairs with them. They seduce them. Uh, the victims, if they're boys, are always described as older than their age. They look bigger. Uh, the woman who ran off, I've forgotten her name, she ran off about two years ago to Florida with a 14-year-old boy. She was his teacher, I think. She was 30-something. Um, this was described as an affair. And my comment was, if that had been a 31-year-old man who'd run off with a 13 or 14-year-old girl, would we have described it as an affair? No, I don't think so. We excuse women. We don't want to believe it. and. As Jermaine Greer said to me on a television program, well, if it is a woman having sex with a young teenage boy, i.e. a 13 or 14 year old, and he gets an erection, then clearly it's his responsibility. And I'm going, excuse me? <laughs> this is not logical. So it seems that the boy, if it's a boy, it's, the boy is blamed 
in any event. If it's a girl, then it's kind of, ooh, you know, ooh, that must be, she must be a lesbian. It must be something like that. It must be a lesbian affair. It's abuse. I'm sorry. It's abuse if the child is under the age of 16. The law states it's abuse, and it doesn't matter whether it's a man or woman. And when two 15-year-old children had sex, why was the boy charged with a sex crime and not the girl as well? Are boys immune to the effects of the very same sexual experiences that are apparently so awful when a girl experiences them? I'm trying to suck my tits. Is there a problem with our society's entire view of what rape is and what rape means? On um, your web pages on the 31st of May, you said you were raped when you were 15 by an older <laughs> woman in a facetious manner. Yes. So why did you do that? Why did you say those words? So there was an article in the paper about a woman who had a teacher who had had an affair with a 15-year-old boy and she was being prosecuted for child molestation or something like that and I wanted to ridicule it because I think that a teacher having, an, I think, I can't remember the age of the teacher, I think she was 23 or 25 um, and uh, the idea that a 15-year-old boy is going to be um, in any shape or form traumatised by the attentions of a I just find it ludicrous. And I think if that's the kind of boys we're bringing up in our society, that they are, that, um, you know, they are going to suffer as a result of a sexual encounter with a much older woman, then God help us. I mean, it's pathetic. And when I was, when I was a boy, uh, I would say that large numbers of uh, children of the 14 and 50, groupies, groupies with, um, you know, rock groups, I mean, 14-year-old girls would go off to the, I mean, it was well known, and, and nobody thought, that, I mean, the parents weren't pleased, but nobody for one minute imagined that these 14-year-old girls were going to be traumatised. Um, I just feel that we are become too we've become too hysterical about sex. And once again, it's one of those things which adds to the, the coldness that we have in our society. Is the reverse true? If it had been a man with a 15-year-old girl um, in a school setting, for example, do you see it as precisely the same? As a woman having sex with Well, I don't actually. I have to say I think that it's worse if I, I, I know it's a double standard. But I do think, but only, be, only I would say because, um, you know, there is a possibility, I suppose, of pregnancy if they have it. And that, whereas there isn't when a boy, there is a physiological change that can take place. However, um, you know, I'm not talking about where, I'm not talking about situations where teachers are persistently seducing students. I'm talking about the occasional one which happens where clearly there's some infatuation between the two and it goes, you know, a bit too far. Yes, when a 28-year-old male teacher fucks his 13-year-old female student, that is a crime. But when 28-year-old Deborah LaFay <laughs> fucks that kid, that's a crime we didn't get it on videotech. <laughs> wow. That's... <laughs> That kid is not traumatized for life. I, I should have been so traumatized for life, so scarred. Whilst I agree that we need to get a grip in society concerning hysteria about abuse, does this really make sense? Do boys simply not need protection from adult women and their sexual desires? And if a particular boy is mature enough at 12 or 13 to deal with sex with a woman and all the baggage that comes with it, is it okay for the boy to get his first sexually transmitted infection at age 13? Is he ready to be a father? if she decides to get pregnant. 